Saving and loading memory is quite easy on the VIC-20 once you know how. However, it isn't really obvious how to do this and therefore this video will present a few simple ways of doing this from BASIC and also from Assembler. A straightforward way to save and load memory from BASIC is to use the open, print hash and get hash commands to write or read a byte at a time. So in the BASIC program here, we're going to open a file on device 8 uh, called block and then we're going to save memory from 673 to 692 so we go through peaking each location and then we print it to the file using print hash 8. Now we use the char dollar to convert the byte to petsky which the print hash command will then convert back to its integer representation when writing to the file or its byte uh, representation. Uh, one interesting thing to note is that even though the file is saved into a PRG it doesn't save the load address so if we want to include that then we'd have to do two print commands beforehand to save the uh, load address to the file at the start. We would save that in um, uh, least significant byte, most significant byte order for the load address. And then uh, once that's saved, uh, we can load it back in again. So we'll reset the VIC and then type in uh, the, the load program, which is virtually the same, except that now we're using get hash 8 to load that back in a uh, byte at a time. And there we are, we can see that we're converting from the string representation in B$ dollar back to a byte or a, a integer rep representation using the ASC command. And then we can run that and see what happens. And there we are, that's loaded our program back in. We can see that the color and border combinations are flashing because our program is in memory at that location. BASIC has built-in commands to save and load programs which we can use to save and load our block of memory. Now we can use the save command in BASIC to save a block of memory by telling the VIC that the tokenized BASIC area is located at the same block of memory that we want to save. So if we look at this example here, we're using locations 43 uh, to set the start of tokenized BASIC and we want that to coincide with our area uh, at 673 and then locations 45, 46 which is the end of tokenized BASIC and that will be for location 692 so that's the range we want to save and then we save that to a PRG uh, flash and, uh, and we want to save that to device 8. This works really well because it's a nice simple way of doing it. However, it does alter the start and end points of BASIC and therefore we'd have to either reset the VIC or rest restore those locations for their original values once finished if we wanted to enter a BASIC program. And it means that we can't actually have that within a BASIC program uh, to save from it. It should also be noted that this method saves the load or origin address to the first two bytes of the file because the uh, comma one is used at the end of the save command. On cassette this prevents the relocation function of the load command. It doesn't actually apply to disk. Now that we've saved our program I'll reset the VIC and we can load it back in using the basic load command. Because the start address is at the start of the file, we can just use a simple load block 2, 8, 1 and that will load it back into the address from which it was saved. And then we'll run the 673 and there we are, we can see our programs loaded into memory at the correct address. Possibly the most interesting way of saving and loading memory is using the basic and kernel ROM routines uh, through basic using the sys command to call them. Uh, the reason I think this is interesting is that in this method we can actually use the parcel basic ROM routine uh, to set the load verify and save parameters. So it, we would actually follow that sys with the parameters that we would normally supply to either load verify and save. So that handles the process of passing those parameters and then once they're passed uh, we can just use uh, either sys 65496 or uh, sys uh, 65493 to either save or load the uh, memory block respectively. And we can see this being used here to save. So we've got sys57809 followed by uh, flash2 which is the name of the file that we want to save, flash2.prg, comma 8, comma 1. So we're saving it to device 8 and uh, we're going to store the load address uh, using that comma 1. Well it isn't actually used for disk but I've put it there in any case. Uh, it would be used if we were using cassette. And then we're going to poke to 193 with a 161, which is the least significant byte at the start of memory that we want to save. Uh, and then 194 with 2, which is the most significant byte. And then we're going to poke 780, 193. So 780, 781 and 782 actually access the registers A, X and Y. So 
by poking to 780, 193, we're setting A to 193, which is storing the, uh, which is the location in zero page of the start address and then we that's the reason we poke to 193 and 194 and then poke uh, 781 and poke 782 that's storing the end address that we want to store to and in actual fact when we use the end address we're actually storing one past the last address that's the way the save routine works and then we say 65496 to save it and then that'll save the disk with the start address in the first two bytes I'll reset the VIC and show how we can load this in using a similar method. Uh, so because we saved the origin or the load address, we don't need to specify the start address if we don't want to uh, when we do the sys 65493 to load this back in. So we can simply do sys 57809, uh, quotes, flash 2, uh, comma 8, comma 1, and then we're poking 780, comma 0, which is the... Uh, which says that we want to load as opposed to verify, in which case we could put 1 there, and then says 65493 to activate the load command. Uh, if we wanted to specify the start and load address, uh, sorry, the start address, then we would have poked into 781 and 782, which is register X and Y of the 6502, and we would have done comma 8, comma 0 after the sys 57809. All of this is mentioned in the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website, which is definitely worth having a look at. And there we are, that's loaded our program and we can run sys673 to uh, see the screen flashing. We can use the same routines used by the sys course above to load and save memory from assembly. So here we are, here's a little uh, assembly routine to do this. So first of all, we set the logical file number, device number and uh, secondary address. So we're using uh, device 8, logical file number 8, and this uses uh, the set LFS, which is uh, FFBA up here. And then we set the file name. So we set the length of the file name to, well in this case I'm going to use the word flash. So we set it to 5. And then we set the least significant and then most significant byte of the file name, or at least of the address of the file name. And then use the set nam routine. And then uh, we set the start address. So we're starting this at a part of memory called flash. Again, least significant, most significant. And we're storing that in location C1 and C2. And then as we did with our previous save command when we sys to it, we tell it where the start of memory is going to be, uh, where the start of the block is going to be that we want to save, so that's at C1. And then we use the byte past the last byte that we want to save as the end address, so the significant, most significant to flash end. And then we jump to our save command. The, uh, the block of memory that I'm talking about is down here, so it's just that little bit of code to flash the screen and border combinations, or to cycle through them. Uh, there's the file name, five characters long. And then we do a BCS after the save, and that checks that if the carry is set, then that would mean there's an error. And then we would jump to our error handling code here, and then uh, we could put something in there. I just put an RTS, and then, um, and then that's that done. So yeah, really simple to do in assembly. I won't bother showing the routine being run because it's just saving and loading, same as we've seen a number of times already. But it does show how it works. To load the memory that we saved back in, uh, really simple from assembly again, very similar to the save routine. So we set the logical file number, device number and secondary address, just the same as we did using uh, set LFS in the uh, save routine. This time, with the secondary address, we would use zero if we wanted to load using the uh, using address that we specify, or one if we wanted to use the original address that was in the file. In this case, we're going to specify an address. And then again, set in the file name. And then we want to set the uh, start of the address. Uh, we don't have to do that if we used one for the secondary address. But in this case, we're going to set it. So we're setting it to the least significant and most significant byte of the uh, address we're using here, which is 02A1 block. And then we use zero in A to indicate that we want to load. We would use one if we wanted to verify. And then we uh, perform the load. And then just the same as with the save, the carry would be set if there was an error. So in which case we would jump or branch to this error handler here, which doesn't do anything other than uh, return. So uh, so that's it. And, uh, and there's not an awful lot more that can be said about it. This code is on the accompanying article in the Tech Tinkering website. Uh, one thing also to mention is that 
Although I've shown all these various routines, one common way people would load and save memory is through a machine language monitor like Vicmon. And I've done previous videos on that and articles on that which you might want to have a look at. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this little survey of various ways of loading and saving memory on the Vic. Uh, do check out some of our other videos, some of our other articles on the Tech Tinkering website. Um, please subscribe.